Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Coming at you with 2 Samuel chapter 30, and I'm going to present another little thing where I don't have the like best evidence in the world, but it's something that made me think. We have David, and I could make so many other points based on this chapter. This is so rich. Please read First and Second Samuel. There's so much political intrigue, backstabbing, drama. Oh, it's so good. Forget Game of Thrones. Well, you don't have to forget if you don't want to. But this is so great. And because it's based on real life, and this stuff really did happen. And it's right here in the Bible. It's great. Well, it wasn't great for some of the things they went through, but it's great to read. It's a great story. So we have David. He's lost everything. His home was invaded. He and his men go back and get it all back. And then we have a problem. Verse 22, and Then all the wicked and worthless men of those who went with David answered and said, Because they did not go with us, the people who stayed with the equipment, we will not give them any of the spoil that we have recovered, except for every man's wife and children, that they may lead them away and depart. So you guys didn't go with us into battle. We're just, we're dumping you. In fact, we're kicking you out of the army. But David said, My brethren, you shall not do so with what the Lord has given us, who has preserved us and delivered into our hand the troop that came against us. For who will heed you in this matter? But as his part is who goes down to the battle, so shall his part be who stays by the supplies. They shall share alike. So it was from that day forward. He made it a statute and an ordinance for Israel to this day. While that is, again, cool and awesome and just shows what a great and wonderful godly man David was, you know, doing things in equity and fairness, the, my thought actually went out to those, to anyone out there who's still thinking that we should somehow make the statutes of the Old Testament like the law, because that's what God said. There are so many problems with that, and this is kind of one more of the problems. He, David... A man, now he was inspired by God on several of his psalms, and I guess people could argue that he was inspired for this particular law here, but he just added a law that was added permanently to the rule books of Israel. Kind of like um, in Esther, the festival of Purim. It was permanently added as one of the festivals, even though God didn't author. I mean, it was a great occasion. I can see why they did it. But these, you know, even Israeli law and customs evolved and changed over time started with God, man added a few of his things, or I guess you could say because of what God did and because they found it to be in accordance with God's law, they added these things. But even that law changed and adjusted over time. So while I'm definitely not knocking like everything in the Old Testament, like I still think the Ten Commandments, you know, not worshiping any other gods, no killing, no adultery, no perjury. Um, I think those are great ideas that should continue into the New Testament and the modern day. But I'm not so sure all the laws and the legal ramifications should apply to today. I'm not so sure we should keep a system for a nation that existed, you know, 5,000-ish years ago. I'm not so sure we, could, we should bring that into the modern world, where we have things like computers and internet and electricity. And so I think the law and the customs need to evolve with time and as people and things change. I don't think... While there are certainly moral obligations in the Bible that we're bound to, I don't think we're bound to every single one of them. Kind of like Jesus did away with the whole sacrifice system. I think there are probably a few legal penalties here and there that probably need to be rethought and rehashed nowadays as well. I'm not trying to excuse any sin. I'm just trying to, kind of like David did, trying to make sense of what, what's on the Lord's heart and what the Lord's doing nowadays, because since Jesus died on the cross and rose again, things have changed a bit. So, just a thought, my thought from this particular scripture. Leave any comments in the um, section down below and tell me what you think. And for right now, that about does it. I love you. Thank you for watching this video. That was totally out of order. <laughs> God bless.